The new Determined Contract Management app for Salesforce is easy to set up. As you can see on the screen here, the Determined Contract statuses, showing on the left-hand side, which maps directly to Salesforce contract statuses on the right side. Simply choose the statuses to map together, and when you're done, move forward one more step in the process to map the fields together. On the left side, shows the Determined Contract Management field name. On the right side, shows the Salesforce field name. It's a simple matter to organize the fields into whatever is desired. So for within Salesforce, it's really simple to open the opportunity. And directly from the opportunity, we can go ahead and create a contract. Simply go over to the side menu here and select New Determined Contract. That's going to log us into the Determined Cloud platform and allow us to create a contract request, which will then be passed along to the contract management team, all the while communicating back to Salesforce the status of our contract. It automatically chooses the contract name. We'll go ahead and give it a new name. We simply select the contract types from the types that we're authorized to create as our user. Create an NDA. We'll go ahead and save our request. That will turn on the other fields we need to specify as part of this request before we pass it along to the contract management team to actually do the authoring. So the center pane, or the left pane, shows us the actual contract itself with the information we need to provide. The right-hand side shows us any notes or documents that we want to attach to the contract request before we pass it off to the contract management team. We're going to go ahead and select Next to move us forward one step in the process. And then we'll simply edit the additional data that's being requested by the system. So most importantly, we've turned on some fields about things like governing law, effective date, years, term, and term type. Uh, we'll go ahead and unselect manual date calculations. So this will be a contract of a term of one year, assuming an effective date of today. If all that looks correct, we'll go ahead and say save. And before we move forward on the process, which we'll do here through the next phase, we'll actually go ahead and send a note along to the contract management team. This is a note to the contract management team. All right, once we save our note here, we can go ahead and pass this along. We'll submit as a request. That'll hand this off to the contract management team and they'll take it from here. Okay, we've logged into the Determined Cloud platform as the contract management team member. And what we see as we slide down here that we have 14 contract requests to process. So not just a number in a box. This is actually a link to take us to that actual opportunity contract request that was created. So here it is on the top of the list. We'll choose it from the list. That'll take us right to it where we can make a decision whether we're going to proceed with this contract or not. So in our case, we're going to decide based on the information given, including the note that was passed along from Salesforce, that this looks like a good contract to continue creating. So we'll go ahead and create the contract project. That will then turn on the additional fields that need to be specified for this kind of contract and allow us to create the contract document, which we can then share back with the sales rep. Okay, so sliding down here, we'll fill in the additional required fields like the primary contact. We'll change our governing law to say California. Term length and years, that was all passed over from Salesforce along with, by the way, the counterparty name and contact names are automatically synchronized with Salesforce. So if they don't exist in the Determined Cloud platform, they exist as soon as they're created when we pass in the contract request. So in our case, we specified all the required fields. Go ahead and say save. We'll move us forward one more step in the process. And that'll allow us to create the contract document. All right, so creating a new contract document is as simple as saying new. And there's three ways to create contract documents. We can certainly upload a raw Word file or a PDF file. We can import it from the contract request that came in from Salesforce. Or we can actually create it from a template defined in the system. We'll go ahead and do a template defined from the system. It's now offering me a list of templates that are known to work with this kind of contract with the permissions that I have. Choose NDA1. And when I hit save, that will now generate a contract document from that template. Now this is full contract management, so we can send it forward to the Redline review process called Collaborate and Determine Cloud Platform. And we can, of course, do the approvals and signatures. 
But let's take a moment and head back to Salesforce and see what this same contract looks like in Salesforce now. So here we are back at Salesforce, and as we can see here, we've moved forward to the negotiation and approval process, which matches the Redline review process we were in the Determine Cloud Platform. We can see the data matches the data that we entered, as well as on the right-hand side, we can see a link to the document that was created through the template. 